Hey guys, Malice here, and welcome to the tutorial. In this episode, I'm going to be covering the very basics of redstone and hopefully get you started using this powerful and yet somewhat daunting part of Minecraft physics. Now, when you first lay redstone dust, it will be inactive. You can activate it very simply by placing a redstone torch at one end of it. A redstone torch will power redstone dust for up to 15 blocks. Now bear in mind that is the length of the wire and not the distance from the torch. When an active wire leads directly into a block, it will power the block, but it has to lead directly into the block, it can't just pass along the side of it. When a redstone torch is placed onto a powered block, it will turn the torch off. It doesn't matter which surface the torch is placed on, but wherever you place the torch will affect which blocks it can power. Now a torch will power any block directly to the side of it, and will power a block which is placed above it. Any block which is placed above it, you can place redstone on top, and that redstone will in turn then be powered as well. In this example you can see the red wool is showing which blocks would be receiving power from the torches placed around the blue block. Buttons will activate a redstone circuit for one second. Switches have an on and an off state which you can toggle between. Pressure plates exist in both wooden and stone form. Both of them will only activate when you are stood on top of them. However, wooden ones will also activate when an item is dropped on top of them, whereas stone ones will only activate if you or a mob is stood on top of them. Now, redstone wire can come out of either the input itself, such as the switch or the pressure plates, or out of the block which is being powered by the input, so a uh, block which is being powered by a button or a switch, or even a pressure plate. The redstone wire can also be placed underneath the block which is being powered by one of those inputs. Redstone circuits can interact with dispensers, redstone lamps, doors and hatches, fence gates, note blocks, TNT, both sticky and non-sticky pistons, uh, detector rails and powered rails as well. Now all of these outputs will have tutorials of their own later in the series. Be aware that an active signal will always override an inactive signal. Now, I know that sounds like it's very logical. Um, however, in this example that you can see here, you will see that I have two switches controlling the same door. Now, the green wall shows where the switches are active, and the red wall shows where they are inactive. Now, it's very possible that with this setup you can end up locking yourself out of your own home if you get the switches muddled and confused, so it's important to bear in mind. A repeater is a system of two redstone torches which can be rigged up to extend that 15 block limit. Uh, it's also the only logic gate in Minecraft to have a block of its own. This repeater block can not only be used to extend the length of the active wire, but also the amount of time that it takes the wire to be activated. This delay is counted in ticks. You can right click each repeater in order to make it count either one, two, three, four ticks. For basic redstone, that's all you really need to know. A repeater will push a signal through any block that it's next to, unlike an active wire which will push it 
into the block, the repeater will actually push it right through and out the other side. Similar to a repeater is the inverter. Now, rather than using two redstone torches to extend the circuit, this just uses one, so it also acts to invert the signal as well. Whereas the repeater will have an active signal going in and an active signal going out, an inverter will have an active signal coming in and an inactive one coming out and vice versa. If you combine a series of repeaters with an inverter, then you'll get something called a clock. Now this is a circuit which will continually pulse until an active signal is put into the inverter, in which case it will stop pulsing. Clocks are used in a lot of redstone circuits, so it's a very good circuit to learn how to make. You can carry a redstone signal upwards infinitely by creating a vertical transistor. This is simply a redstone torch with a block placed on top of that, and then a redstone torch on top of that, and a block on top of that, and so on, as high as you need it. Where two separate circuits are running parallel, you can stop them from interacting with each other by placing a block in between them, effectively cutting that line. If two circuits are interacting and you need them to do so, but you also need to put a block in that position, you can use glass as this will not cut that power. Okay, that's pretty much it for the basics of redstone. I hope you found it interesting and informative. Um, join me in the next episode where I'm going to start covering some of the more complicated logic gates uh, which you can use to interact with the circuit and kind of manipulate it to do some more complicated things. Have fun playing with your redstone circuits until then and I will see you next time.